Huh? Knives out? No, what is that? Hey guys, saying it's alive. We're gonna be doing one of my favorite activities. <laughs> knife sharpening, all right? I got the, oh, I got the good one. I got the big boy here. I got my favorite knife sharpening set. So we're gonna be using whetstones and uh, I'm gonna show you how to do it. To the sink, Hunzi. No, we're not going to the sink yet. False alarm. There's a lot of different ways to sharpen a knife, okay? And as the great Bob Kramer once told me, he's a knife maker out in Washington. This ain't necessarily alive, but it's got energy. Watching that start to finish, if that don't make you feel alive. I wanted to say something I forgot about, like, I know this isn't alive, but making knives, you know, if that don't make you feel alive. Uh, I mean, I know it's not alive. This isn't exactly alive. If making a high performance knife like this, if that don't make you feel alive, then uh, we can't help you. Yeah, I actually made a knife with him. Check out the episode. Swipe down or up. There's not a, there's no wrong way necessarily. There's a lot of different ways to do it. If someone likes to go like this and someone likes to go like that, whatever works as long as you're doing it correctly. We got a bridge. So this is this holds our, our stones, which goes in over the sink, which is really convenient because a we, we need water. Water's the water's the lubrication in this process. So the range can go anywhere from. Let's just say 400, I mean, you can probably even go lower. 400 being, you know, it's just like sandpaper. The, the lower the number, the more coarse the grit. The higher, the finer. So 400, real coarse. You're removing a lot of material, you're cutting. 10,000, which was what we'll finish on, you're polishing, man. All you're, you're not removing a lot of material. You, know, you can't skip steps, you can't rush things. So you wanna make sure you need to do what you need to do on the 400 and on the 1,000, because if you don't, and you try to just rush it to the fun part, the polishing, you're not Ooh, going to have you? a very sharp knife. Right. We'll get into that. Quick little test. This knife ain't dull, but look, it's having a hard time push cutting, right? You could slide cut. Most knives can do a slide cut if it's not garbage. But if you look real close, that cut is kind of, there's like little tears, right? Can you see that? As it's cutting, it's like tearing because it's not super, super sharp. Start off, I figured we would make this knife a little dull. Okay, I got this thing here. It has nothing to do with sharpening knives, but actually taking care of your stones. It's also really good at dulling your knives. So it's probably making a lot of people cringe, but we have a nice little edge on there. I'm just gonna, oh. Oh, that's not good, listen to that. Yeah, that's not very good for your blade. I mean, we're still kind of sharp, but it's because I had a good edge on here, but. We did some damage, okay? Damage has been done. Uncle Johnny barred your knife. He decided it'd be cute to kind of like, you know, shave off a 16th of an inch on the tile he was redoing your bathroom with or something. All right, Johnny? <coughs> so we mimicked that. So boom, we got this stone right here. 400 grit, it's our cutter, ready to go. We're removing material. After 400, 1,000, 5,000, 10,000. 10,000, super fine. And just because you thought that was it, <laughs> you want to bring it to that next level, that shave your freaking face, not advised. You want to get some leather. It's called stropping. Just like back in the day when you go to the barber shop and you know they had that piece of leather with their straight edge, you know, and they were with their razors and they're stropping their leather, making it real nice and sharp. That's what they're doing. And this is nice because you're over water. You got a little water right here. You're ready to go. So look, I get that nice and wet. And then this is adjustable too. Okay, now we're not going nowhere. Boom, we're in there, nice. A good rule of thumb, the wonderful Bob Kramer taught me one time, if you're unsure of how what well your angle should be, it's the back, so how do you describe that? The back edge of a book of matches. That thick part of a book of matches, if you were to put that under here, that's the perfect angle. And every knife's a little different. And everyone's gonna do this a little differently. Don't start on your favorite knife or your most expensive knife. Get a run-of-the-mill knife that has decent steel so you're not beating yourself up with that. And put in some time. Get good at it, get comfortable with it, and then jump into a knife that matters something to you. So for here, and you want to do even strokes. Whatever way you do it, you do 10, and then you want to do 10 on the other side. Always work in mirrors. So I go up, and then I also go down. That's how I like I, I rock it like that. You want to make sure you're getting the tip, and also the whole, all the way to the heel. And then flip, same thing. Okay. 
and always stop and look at what you're doing. You're looking for consistent cuts, okay? You can kind of see where it's starting to grind. It lost that polish edge and now it's getting real. You just want to make sure if you were laying it flat, you see how it's a little steeper here? That means I'm dropping it a little flatter on the heel. You want to just try to contain this as, as consistent as possible. And in this first stage is where you really want to get that like wire peel, that wire edge. So when you're looking, you're, you're, when you're on, if you were grinding on, on a microscope, if you were sharpening this, you're cutting, you're removing, you're cutting, you're removing on one side, and then, you, and then it kind of rolls the edge a little. And then you cut it and remove it, that rolls off. Eventually, that wire edge will come off. And that's a good indicator that you are at, have done as much as you need to in this early stone. You want to make sure you're pushing, okay? It's not a real light thing. You are removing material. You're eventually, you're essentially sanding metal, right? So I forget the poundage. I should have refreshed my memory, but you can, oh, I should look it up. Damn it. I forget what, I think it was something like 10 pounds or something. Let me look on my phone. I don't know the password for that. Hold on. Let me just look it up. Oh, Kramer pops up. Huh. Oh, Bobby Kramer himself, Master Bladesmith. He damn right. Okay, so he's saying apply around six to eight pounds of pressure. So what he was saying, if you don't know what that feels like, here, we'll get Andy's. Andy, I'm going to borrow your scale. Thanks. I'll come over to you. This is fun. As you put your knife on there like you were going to sharpen it, and then push how much six is, six to eight, just so you know. Yeah, thanks, Bob. That's actually a really good tip. And I like to, after a couple rotations, I like to, I like to put a little more water on my stone. Rinse the knife as you go. This is, you will spend the most time on this stone. And, and that's what I think is the biggest mistake people make when they try sharpening their knives is that, hey, listen, it's fun to jump to the next stone and, and try to get that thing that's gonna cut like a razor. But you can't rush this because if you don't do this to the correct um, level, you're, all, you're never, all that's going to do is highlight your poorly sharpened knife. So until you get that wire roll, that wire edge, that little roll, you're not done with the 400. So you can kind of even see it on this edge. You see where it's starting to pick up that black? With a microscope, you can see it a lot more. So you're seeing how the water has changed a little, right? We have all that color. Now that's part of the abrasion stone itself. But you're also, like I said, we're also, stand, we're also sanding steel. So you're getting real fine powder of steel coming off too, which is also part of how we take care of our, our stones. And I'll show you that later, how you can get some of that embedded steel out of your stone. And this isn't something where you just put some music on and black out and start going away. You don't have to go a million miles an hour, okay? It's like a controlled motion. You're better, it's, it's, like, uh, it's like doing push-ups, okay? You're better off doing 10 really good ones than 50 sloppy ones. That's actually great advice for this. It's catching my skin a little bit right there. There's that little roll, and that's what we want. All right, so that's our, one, that's our 400. Next up is the 1,000. Same exact thing, just a different grit. I'll do reps of 10 on each side times three, and, we'll, and I'll check it after that. And I like to carry that all the way through to the 10,000. So what we're really changing here, we're not changing technique, we're not changing pressure, we're only changing the coarseness of the stone. And the stone is going, the stone is the variable in this. And again, you can go one motion if you want, whatever is comfortable for you. But a good starting point is you put a little pressure here and on your handle, you hold like that, fingers on your tip, start at the bottom tip and work your way up to the opposite. Yeah, and I mean, as you're sharpening with this, you know, I've cut myself sharpening, but it's mostly like things with, with finger placement. And like, you don't even really know. Oh, shit. Sorry, hold on. Just find something that you're comfortable with gliding. Then <laughs> we're going to jump into the next stone. Next stone being 5,000. And again, Less cutting, more of a polish. Oh, that feels good. Look at that. You can see. First draw. 
again, sounds different, feels way different. It's like you're sliding on glass. Less and more, even less, you know, kind of a bad example. So here, we're just gonna get into the polish. This is 5,000. Switching to the old 10,000. It's like glass, you know? It's our last one before the leather. You wanna use as much of the stone as possible. You don't wanna work one little spot. This is actually a good tip. See, a good thing, sometimes you see stones will have bellies in it, or someone gets, they get comfortable on one side. You wanna, it's all about having a nice flat stone. And so I like to try to use as much of the stone as possible. So we're going, nice mirror edge. We're in pretty good shape. And that's really looking and stopping and looking at what you're doing progress along the way is really how you get better at it, where you can kind of grade yourself. Morocco, speaking of, we got probably the only two people I feel comfortable sharpening knives in this kitchen. It's me. <laughs> but we brought this all the way up to 10,000, which is about as polished as you need to be. And I'm going to show these folks. Most people don't go to 10,000. 10,000 is a lot, but recommend it if you want to geek out. I mean, you don't have to do 5,000 will get you there. 5,000, 6,000, you're okay. Finish on leather? Yeah. Game changer. Finish on leather. So that's where we're at. I'm going to show some folks about, about the leather strop. I feel like the leather strop, I mean, honestly, like, if you take one thing away from this, it's, it's like the strop. strop takes you that last 10%. Oh, well, I'm not shaving. I'm not sure if it really worked. It's, uh, and to it's like razors. To like, oh, yeah. I, it really does. And that's why, I mean, I made the joke before about the old barber running it on the strop, oh, the yeah, razor oh, yeah, before, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was for a reason. Yeah. Not just before the, before the hipsters like made it cool. If you're gonna cool. shave with the, with the, with the buoy knife. Oh, like you're stropping. The predator, you're stropping for that. Oh, Rambo stropped. Oh, Rambo stropped, for sure. <laughs> Thanks, Morocco. Sorry, Speaking of strop, no water, okay? Only thing different, when I was going like this and coming back, no, 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 big no, no, you'll cut the leather. This is 100% one direction, and that's edge away from, you're never cutting into this leather. Woof. Now this knife, crazy sharp, nice mirrored edge. Now watch, it'll cut that paper way better. This should just drop and cut. Way cleaner. This should be good enough to take the hair right off the arm, shall we? For the sake of science, we'll do this patch. Can you guess who I am? What are you doing, Gracie? Don't show these kids. Don't do that at home. Ew. Sharp enough to shave the hair off the arm. Not a problem. Not bad, actually. I've had razors that freaking cut worse. Like? Gabby, my God, you look like the Tin Man. Yes, that's why I put this jacket you on. You nailed it, Gabriella. Thank you. Costume. Bye. Bye, guys. Halloween. Thanks, Gabby. Don't try that at home. I've done that a thousand times. But look at that. Clean shave. Hold on. I did. I did. <laughs> I didn't cut myself, but it like. Look at that. Pretty smooth, man. Look at that. It's disgusting. But that's it, man. Done. Make a knife from grinding it on stone to shaving the hair right off your arm. Look at that, like a freaking baby's butt. Yeah, baby. Oh, and again, you got your nice knives. You spend, you know, you got some nice stones. You spend some time getting good at sharpening, okay? But this whole time, you and Mickey or you and Susie or whatever you're doing, <laughs> whoever you live with, I don't know. Throw, you got some roommates, okay? You, wanna, you don't want to just go throwing this in your junk drawer banging in there with the rest of the knives. It's gonna damage the knife. What I make is little sayas, little wooden covers, okay, easy. You can get them, three.wooddesign.com. <laughs> Instagram at three.wooddesign. Um, we'll make one for you, custom. But uh, little sayas, or a nice leather knife roll, or if you're in the house, I like the little magnet strips, okay? Oh, you got it up on the wall, clink, and it just magnet sticks right to it. Some of them are wood, you know? Three dot wood design. Some of those are wood where you'll get a chunk of wood with a veneer over it of wood and the magnets behind it. You put that on your wall, real pretty. Clink, you throw your blades on there, nice. That's knife sharpening, man. And again, there's ways I could do better at this. Is this 100% sharp as hell? Yeah, good enough to work for many uh, It's Alive videos to come, sure. Can I be better? Yeah, but that's part of the joy of it, right? Something you can always continuously get better at. And 
treat your knife well, it'll treat you well. You know, sharp knife, you're gonna cut yourself a lot less than a dull knife where you gotta push and make. Oh, for God's sakes, we're trying to make a movie over here. It's just joshing. Some folks, oh, let me get the sharpener. All right, I'm, I'm, let me get a different knife for God's sakes. Let me get the sharpener. This does not sharpen. Okay, all this is is a hardened steel that's a little harder than your knife. And what you're doing is when you dull a knife, the edge starts to roll a little, right? Okay, if you look under a microscope, an edge of a blade is these little diamonds that come to points and meet together and you get a real fine little edge. This is a blade underneath the microscope. This is very important. And as it gets dull, those little diamonds start to fold over, okay? What the honing steel does is throw them back straight. Same angle, some folks like to just run it on there or you run it down again, whatever, whatever makes you happy, whatever makes you feel comfortable. But the big difference between honing steel and sharpening. You're not cutting material with this, you're throwing it. But as much as you need to take care of your knife, you gotta take care of your stones too. So besides just dulling knives, this here unit is great, it's for flattening, okay? It's got these channels in it, it's real coarse. You run it on your stone nice and evenly, nice and flat. And this last one takes out, like you see how we have some of that black in there, it's from that, it's from our slurry, it's micro particles of steel, of stone, and this here just kind of is just is going to help us wash it out. Because if that starts to build up, then you're not running on a true grit. <laughs> the movie. And you're running on all types of embedded objects. So you want to bring it right back to the factory grit, just like that. Take care of your stones, take care of your knives. Take care of yourself, most importantly, okay, folks? Hope that was helpful for you guys. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions about knife sharpening, honing, stones, etc., or any general questions about life or things to do in the kitchen, just drop it in the old comments section below. I read every single one of them, so be nice. But remember, there's no real wrong way to do it as long as you're getting the right results. Could I be better? Yes. But so could you. So let's get there together, folks. Bon appetit. That's the nicest outro I ever said in my life, I think. I could be better, but so can you. I like that. Oh, that one went over the fence, pal. All right, no little funny jokes. No, no bouncing off the wall on that one. Gone. Parking lot in Queens. That's it. Clean this up. I, mean, I, I got work to do.